This program is sponsored by Florida Pickleball Clothing Company, the premier destination for specially designed t-shirts for pickleball players. That's FloridaPickleballClothingCompany.com. Hey everybody, it's Glenn. I want to welcome you to yet another installment of Murders, Mysteries, and Conspiracies. If you are a first-time listener, I want to thank you for tuning in and spending a little bit of your day with me. If you are a returning listener, I want to thank you for that. I hope you've had time to check out all the episodes on Spotify and iTunes and the many other vendors that are now carrying this program. I also have my Murders, Mysteries, and Conspiracies channel on YouTube, along with my Murders, Mysteries, and Conspiracies.com website, which you're looking at. You can go there and click the Listen Now button, and that'll get you to Spotify, where you can listen to all the various shows that I've done over the past six months or so, and you can also get to my website uh, from there also. So today we're going to talk about something that may be puzzling to a lot of people, and that's the Ukraine war. Where's all this money going? Where is it being sent? How's it being allocated? Are there people lining their pockets? Is it actually going to help anybody? What's the impact of it? And I'm going to relate all this to a phrase that they used many, many decades ago called the domino theory and how the domino theory could relate to today's conflict in Ukraine. Then I'm going to finish up with a video from Colonel Douglas McGregor. He was on the show Redacted which is a pretty good program. And he was talking about the current situation in the Ukraine. And I wanted to share that with everybody. So let's get started and talk about the domino theory and Ukraine today on murders, mysteries, and conspiracies. Now, what is the domino theory? Now the domino theory was a U.S. foreign policy decision made after the second world war. What it was, was the opinion that, if communist countries started to develop, if Russian communism spread, it would spread throughout Asia and overtake Asia. North Vietnam was communist, South Vietnam was not, and they were afraid that South Vietnam would fall. And once South Vietnam fall, fell, they thought that it would end up impacting all the other countries and eventually end up impacting us here at home. But was that necessarily the case? Now, as many of you may not know, John F. Kennedy really didn't want to be in Southeast Asia. He was pulling troops out, and then after his assassination, RS, the situation over there escalated. So it became very uh, protracted. It just was a mess. And a lot of Americans died. A lot of Americans were wounded over there, fought bravely, and were wounded. And... But where did the money go for it? Where does the money go to the Ukraine? You know, how many people actually died? Was it worth what we had to undertake? Well, with the exception of Cambodia and Laos, communism did not spread throughout that region. But really, was it the war that stopped it or was it something else? Now, what I always look at is just casualties. And one of the one of the most alarming things when I looked at casualties from Vietnam was total casualties. Just, you know, everybody, civilian deaths and not just soldiers deaths, but civilian deaths. And an estimate by the Department of Defense after the war came up with a figure of 1.2 million civilian casualties between, you know, 1965 and 1974. And it even went as high as 1.3 million when you look at everything that they, when they put in all the deaths, it's just, it was a tragic situation, but it just couldn't, I couldn't help but see a comparison between, you know, if Putin gets Ukraine, he's going to keep rolling and he's going to take over Europe. It's almost like the domino theory being used once again. Uh, you know, you, you're either fighting them over there or you're fighting them here type of thing. And we need to keep giving them money, keep giving them money. So I just thought to myself, where is this money going? How is it being allocated? Is it going to uh, the right places? Do we even have any idea? And I've heard that people don't know where it's being spent. But I found a really good uh, article, and I think you will 
find it interesting. And it's how is this aid being spent? And it's summed up in six charts. Now, when this was done, which was February 23rd, 2024, they had spent 75 billion in assistance to Ukraine. Now they've sent approved more money recently, as many of you know. And uh, it's interesting to see how it's being spent. Now, 1.6 billion went to humanitarian aid, which is not a lar very large piece of it. And that's emergency food assistance, healthcare, refugee support, and things like that. 26.4 billion or 35% went through budgetary aid through economic support, funds, loans, and other financial support. Security assistance, training, equipment, weapons, logistics, support, that made up about 25% of it. About 32% of it went to weapons directly uh, through the Department of Defense stockpiles provided through presidential drawdowns. And then the final part was grants, loans for weapons and equipment. That was 6%. That was 4.5 billion. So 46.3 billion or 62% went directly to the war. The other things were humanitarian type of aid. Now, when you split it out, these are very good graphics. You can see how the U.S. arsenal has supplied Ukraine from 2020 to December of 2023. And this is just, I mean, 10,000 Javelin anti-armor systems, 90,000 other anti-armor systems and munitions, uh, 198, 155 millimeter howitzers, uh, 186 Bradley fighting vehicles. I mean, 31 Abrams tanks. You can see this is a huge amount of munitions that we are pumping into that country to try and help them defend themselves and help them fight off the Russians. Now, is any of this working? Is any of it actually making a dent? I want you to look at this, this map. This is the Department of Defense map. Now, this was a recent map showing the situation in Ukraine. This is the entire country of Ukraine. And this is where they're fighting. This is basically, you know, stalled. There's nothing moving. There's nothing. This is the Donbass region. And that's where most of these people consider themselves Russian anyway. So I don't know why we have sent all this aid. We're really not accomplishing anything unless we've driven out the Russians. They're talking about trench warfare now, digging trenches over there and starting to shore those up. And that could mean us giving them money for decades, you know, if they get into a trench warfare situation like World War One, it could mean a terrible situation. But I want you guys to watch a quick video that that I was able to clip out of a episode of Redacted from yesterday and see what you think. <clears throat> this is General Douglas McGregor talking about the situation. After Kharkov falls into Russian hands, which is going to happen very soon, I think, they will then cross the river and turn south and take Odessa. And there's nothing the Ukrainians can do to stop them. They simply don't have the forces. And they have numerous opportunities to cross that river whenever they like. Uh, they've left most of the bridges intact. This was always their plan because they wanted to get to Odessa. Odessa is historically a Russian city. So we'll see. A Russian this morning contacted uh, me through another friend and said that he sees no French or American troops in Odessa. I sincerely hope that that condition does not change. If it does, then I, I think the Russians will accelerate all of their movements and we will find ourselves at war with Russia. Unnecessarily. For, for what particular purpose? And again, no one expresses any interest in what's happened to the Ukrainian people. Ukrainians are exhausted. They're tired of this war. They've lost, now we think, 600,000 dead and a, another million or two wounded. Millions have left. The country is destroyed. It desperately needs peace. We should. Okay, that was General Douglas McGregor talking about the situation over there. 600,000 dead. Uh, a lot of people don't realize that's to that extent, 
a lot of the mainstream news isn't really focusing on it. I saw a New York Times article that did say there was a half a million dead, but a lot of the estimates I'm seeing aren't nearly that high. But we need to understand the gravity of the situation and the fact that I hope and pray that our troops aren't over there fighting this war uh, before long uh, because they're running out of people. And it does not turn into another Vietnam for us. So I'd love to know your thoughts on this, your feedback. But this is Glenn from Murders, Mysteries, and Conspiracies. I hope you'll tune in and uh, we'll talk again. Okay, thanks. Thanks for listening to the latest episode of Murders, Mysteries, and Conspiracies with author Glenn P. Klinger III.